Corey DeAngelis is the Reason Foundation Senior Fellow, American Federation for Children Senior Fellow. Corey, good to see you. Um, you know, I think of the better than 100 billion spent during COVID, presumably a lot of it earmarked, is, that's always an awful word uh, for, for schools and all of that, but a lot of it unspent, right? Yeah, if you look at the latest data reported at the Wall Street Journal from earlier this summer, 93% of the funding from the American Rescue Plan dedicated to K-12 education hasn't even been spent yet. That's over $100 billion. How did that happen? Uh, well, uh, they're sitting on the money. They have so much money that they don't know what to do with it. And in places like Los Angeles, the latest data that I've seen reported, they were planning on increasing the number of teachers in the system by about 8%, the number of custodial workers in the system by about 25%, and the number of psychological slash support social workers by about 80%, while they've lost like 6% of their school age population in Los Angeles public schools. In far too many places, the public education system has become a jobs program for adults as opposed to an education initiative for kids. And that means less money to spend on uh, uh, improving academic outcomes for kids. And I think the one way to fix this is school choice, allow for more competition so that the districts have an incentive to spend that money in the classroom on kids' academic outcomes. And then if the schools aren't doing that, well, families could vote with their feet. If you look at the data that just came out from the nation's report card, that Catholic schools didn't lose any ground academically as far as math uh, fourth grade scores. Hmm. But nationwide, the, the students lost about five points. So Catholic schools fared better and they were more likely to be in person. Department of Defense schools fared better on, in each of the four assessments. And they were more likely to be in person as well. It's about time we start to fund the student as opposed to the system so that the schools have a stronger incentive to cater to the needs of families as opposed to the other way around. But there seem to be limits on how we can potentially reappropriate these funds that were never spent in the first place. Right. And a lot of times uh, teachers and administrations are deciding that and they don't like some of your ideas. Yeah, well, of course, uh, they don't like the ideas, but school choice to benefit teachers, too. I mean, this isn't parents versus employees. If you look at the data, this is this has been the case for decades now, since 1970, all the way through 2019. And the National Center for Education Statistics has reported that per pupil education expenditures after adjusting for inflation have increased by about 154 percent. At the same time, teacher salaries have only increased by about 8% in real terms. Hmm. Where's all the money going? It's not going towards the classroom. It's going towards administrative bloat and staffing surges, which are great for teachers union bosses like Randy Weingarten, who make over $500,000 a year. It's not so good for the teachers in the classroom. It's not so good for the kids in the classroom either because it's not going towards improving uh, learning outcomes. Real quickly, you mentioned that a lot of Catholic schools, private schools, charter schools, they, they didn't shut down through the pandemic. They still had in-person classes and the rest. Is that the lesson for the next, God forbid, COVID event? Absolutely. If we had more competition, if we had more school choice, we wouldn't have seen the school closures as long as we did over the past couple of years. Another study by Michael Hartney, Boston College professor, and his uh, uh, co-author, Leslie Finger, published in a peer-reviewed journal uh, earlier this year, found that places, public schools that had more Catholic private schools in the area, the public schools were more likely to open as well, all else equal, suggesting... If families had exit options, even though they still had to pay out of pocket, there were lower cost exit options in the Catholic schools. The public schools responded to that competition as well, as we see in every other industry and every other level of education. That's a very good point there. Let the market decide this and not, not some, you know, nameless bureaucrat. Uh, Corey DeAngelis, thank you. Very good seeing you again.